are doing a study on, on demons, right? Okay, it was because we were out for some time and we couldn't carry on with our series, but then we have to pick it up from where we left. And we are dealing with the spirits or understanding the spiritual. And um, there is, I'm not going to get into a lot of details today, but I want to justify something before I say what I want to say. Genesis chapter number five, verse number 23. Genesis 5, verse number 23, and verse 25 again, verse 24. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Verse 24, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. You may be seated. I remember some time back when I was invited to, to do a presentation and it was during a graduation ceremony. And I mentioned some issues to do with some of the lapses that I discovered that took place during the canonization of the Bible. And like I'm saying, if I get into details today, we will not finish, but I want to justify what I'm going to say later on. I want to justify because I'm going to be giving you some truths and information but some of the information that I'm going to be giving to you, I'll be borrowing them from a strange place. But I don't want that place to remain strange. Because you'll be hearing things from me that I've searched out, not just spiritually, but I've done my physical research, looked into several places where I can get that information and I found that information. But when I then um, refer you to certain places, I don't want those places to be strange to you. So I'm going to justify my sources, some of the sources that I'm going to be using. So it's, it's, it's a way of defending what I'm doing. So today I want you to listen to this uh, a teaching that I'm going to give to you. This word of God that we have, the Bible, there is nothing really special about the term Bible. Bible simply means a collection of scriptures. It's a collection of any written or documented events. The Bible is a collection of scriptures put together in one place. But that's why sometimes we call it the Holy Bible. It means it's a holy uh, collection of written scriptures. And why we call it holy is because we also understand the participation of God when those scriptures were written and how the scriptures, the Bible says, for all scriptures are inspired by God. So the Bible was not in this form 
or the Holy Scriptures were not in this form before. Before we could have a book like the one that we have now, some years back they used to have scrolls. And when people were doing their work, when prophets were prophesying, there were scribes, there were secretaries, there were writers that were there putting everything on pieces of paper. And they were writing everything that the Lord was saying and what the Lord was doing. And those were the scrolls that people were now using. So we didn't have a compiled book like we now have but they were scattered everywhere, like the book of, if we talk of the book of Isaiah, it was a separate book on its own. And with all the chapters that we see now, those are not the rest of the chapters that he wrote. There are several other chapters that he wrote and were never discovered. And the book of uh, Genesis, the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, all these books, the book of Joshua and so on, these were scrolls. You wouldn't find them in one place like we now have the Holy Bible. No. So these scrolls throughout time in history were collected. And there was a process that they call the canonization, the process of selecting which scrolls were supposed to be part of the Holy Bible. So they would look at a book and the word canon, it simply means a measuring stick or a measuring rod. So they were canonizing the scrolls to see if they qualify to be part of the Holy Bible. So, so many scrolls were written, so many books, so many pages were flying everywhere, but there was a process of selecting, carefully choosing which books to put into this Bible that we now have. So some books could not qualify, but some of the books like we now have in the Word of God qualified to be part of the Bible that we have. I want you to follow, please. Are you following? Okay. This was the criteria. They would look at uh, whether the book was um, was the author of the book recognized? Who is the author of the book? This book that we are reading, who wrote the book? How about the reputation of the person? Was he known? So the author of the book was supposed to be an established author. And number two also was the book widely accepted by the believers. Obviously, like the like anything that Moses might have written, all of us we know that automatically when Moses came down from the mountain, he brought the, uh, the stones, and on the stones were the Ten Commandments, and immediately they were accepted. And people were using that. So they were also looking at that when they were doing the canonization, it wasn't like one group of people that were just doing that. It was over a period of time where believers would go through some of those scrolls and accept and reject some. And ultimately, they had to then at some point sit down and make a conclusion and come up with only one Bible like we now have. And they would look also at whether the book is inspired. Is it inspired? How, how would they know that the book is inspired or it's not inspired? They were looking also at the prophecies contained within the scrolls. Do we have prophecies in the scroll? What is the prophet saying? Do we have some of those prophecies coming to pass? If there are prophecies and those prophecies are being fulfilled and so on, so they would accept that scroll and also put it into this same book. So it would pass the canonization process. So it wasn't just an issue of picking any religious book and bringing it into the uh, word of God and assume that it is also inspired. No, they were analyzing book per book or scroll per scroll until we now have the Bible that we have.
But this is the issue that I want to talk about. And I believe that what we have, all the scriptures that we now have in this word of God, they are divinely inspired. God breathed into this word that we now have. It is accurate. It doesn't, it doesn't confuse you. It doesn't contradict itself. Scripture supports another scripture. This book is, is the only organized book that I've ever read. It's true. It's accurate. The prophecies there are spot on. It's a wonderful book, inspired book. So in this book that we have, which is already accepted, there is a man that walked with God by the name Enoch. If we are to believe that it was Moses who wrote the book of Genesis, it means that Moses also wrote some things about Enoch. And acknowledging the relationship that was there between Enoch and God. And also for us to understand that Moses himself also approved that relationship, which means he also canonized the relationship. There is a man that walked with God for about 365 years or so. He had a relationship with God. And he walked with God, did some operations with God to a point where the Bible says, and then God had to take him. He's one of those people, it's very rare in the Bible to come across such kind of a scripture where you hear a man like Moses admitting that there was another man. Moses had a very strong relationship with God. Please remember Moses. Remember Moses. And he's talking of another man who walked with God. Moses walked with God. But he's talking about another man who walked with God to a degree that God had to take him. <laughs> he was not for God took him. Which means that man, if that man Enoch is to write a book, it has to be accepted. Why? Because there is another book that you have accepted that is accepting Enoch. Okay. Okay. It's because we're going to be making some references to somewhere. That's why I'm trying, I said I have to justify what I'm going to be doing from next Sunday. So please follow this. This man, the way that he walked with God, some of us might think that maybe he did something wrong. That's why maybe God took him as a way of maybe punishing him or something like that. You can go again to the book of Hebrews, which is one of the books that qualified to be in the Holy Bible which means the book of Hebrews also proved that it's an inspired book and it's a prophetic book. And in the book of Hebrews, if we are to find Enoch there, it means even that portion that is mentioning Enoch is an inspired portion. Chapter 11, verse number 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony 
that he pleased God. <laughs> before this is not happening after he's gone before he was translated there was a testimony that there's a man during our time who can walk with God in an unusual manner it was not and he was translated by faith not through disobedience it's not like God is taking him so that you punish him some no by faith his faith grew to a level where he just vanished and disappeared like that. So if Enoch is to say anything, it has to be accepted. So I'm, I'm saying this because I don't want to come across a book written by Enoch and ignore it. Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. Okay, let me show you the book of Jude. Look at the book of Jude. <laughs> chapter, chapter 1, verse number 14. And who? Who? Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied. He was a prophet, right? He prophesied of these. Who are these? You read the entire chapter. He was talking about a generation that was to come. Enoch prophesied of a generation of rebellious people that was going to arise. And before they could manifest during the time of Jude, Enoch had already prophesied about them. And how did they get to know that Enoch prophesied about these people unless Enoch, after his prophecies, something was written? And there has to be a book. What Jude is saying, Jude is not prophesying what Enoch prophesied. Jude read the book of Enoch which is not part of this holy bible sit down sit down sit down okay okay let me just give you something that you can just brainstorm what if imagine if you are writing a letter you are Jude you are writing a letter to a church somewhere and you are quoting somebody that what I'm telling you even Enoch prophesied about what I'm saying or prophesied about these people. Those people that you are writing that letter to, are they not going to ask, so who is Enoch? Which means the person that Jude is talking about is not a stranger to the recipients of the letter. Which means there is information already available to the people. They have access to the book of Enoch for Jude to make a reference to, to the prophecies that were given by, by Enoch because they were going to ask a question so who is this Enoch how can we just from nowhere just say even Enoch <laughs> prophesied about these people who is Enoch where do we find him which means these people had access to certain resources that we, we no longer have access to now And all of these people that I'm giving to you now, why are they quoting a man that never really walked with God? Habakkuk was called by God. Jeremiah was called by God. All of these prophets were inspired and anointed by God. But how many of them do you hear in the Bible confirming that they were translated? I'm not saying they were not anointed. Please hear me now. Hear me now. This man is an outstanding character. To a point that the Bible is not shy. It's, the Bible is not hesitant to talk about him. That he walked with God and he disappeared because of that relationship.
Are we together? Right. Okay, 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 okay. Please, 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 please. Look at this. Look at this. I will not take much time. Look at this. <laughs> we have a man here walking with God and is confirmed. And he gave some prophecies about what we now have. Jude is saying, these men that you see now rising up and coming up and doing this and what they are doing. A prophet, there was a prophet in the past by the name Enoch who prophesied about them, which means he's a true prophet. My problem now is when people begin to say the entire book of Enoch is rubbish. And yet you have a reference in your inspired book talking about a man who wrote a book that is not inspired. That's where I have a problem now with theologians. You will notice if you come across the book, I wouldn't want you to just read it without an interpreter. The way that that man prophesied is much more detailed than any of the prophets that she can talk of. Enoch was able to see even the flood that came during the time of Noah. And he gave it in form of prophecy. And he told the people and he, his prophecy was accurate even up to the number of the people that were going to be saved. And he even gave a description of the ark that he saw in a vision. Okay? Because you, we can't just have a scripture that says somebody walked with God and you reject his work. You reject his prophecies. You reject anything that he wrote. How can you do that? And the ones that you have accepted, we don't hear whether those people really were translated after their work. There is a man that we are sure of. There is a man that we are sure of. Please. There is a man that we are sure of. Please. There is a man that we are sure of. Can you see that something <coughs> terrible was done? It was deliberate. Some group of people didn't want us to have access to certain information. Yes. And some of these books that we're talking about, maybe they are now part of the apocrypha. Maybe I talk about apocrypha or book in Ogipa. accurate I'm saying this because next week I will take you there. I want to show you some things. Because we're talking about demons, right? <laughs> a man who walked with God, I don't have a problem. You see, let me conclude this part. We hear of the book of Joshua in the Bible. Yeah? It's written in the book of Joshua. Okay, if you try to look for the book of Joshua, you can't find it. Okay, right. If you say this Bible is inspired, every scripture, every verse is inspired, which means the verse that talks about the book of Joshua is also inspired. I don't like the idea, listen to me now. Please, how can I explain this? I know there are so many books out there that are not inspired. 
But don't allow those books to be mentioned in an inspired book. And making a reference to an in, a book that is not inspired. And when Jude went further to explain, he even said, I see the Lord coming with the... You see, remember the scripture that I've given you from Jude. Listen, he said, Enoch prophesied about these people and then he began to give the prophecies. How it was given. He is quoting from the book of Enoch. If you go to the book of Enoch, you will see where it is written, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. You will see that scripture. I will give you the verse. He is just borrowing it from the book of Enoch. And putting it into your inspired Bible. A verse that is coming from an uninspired book. We have a problem somewhere. We have a problem somewhere. What I can agree is that there could be some shortcomings in the book here and there because maybe they were picking up some scrolls and so on. You might end up, end up getting another book which is just called the book of Enoch and it's not coming from Enoch and it's not consistent with other scriptures. I would have preferred that these guys were supposed to canonize maybe the scriptures, not the entire book and throw away scriptures that are not consistent with other scriptures but in the same book if you are listen to me you don't you don't throw away the entire book even with the book of isaiah there was another scroll that they found out as if it was written by isaiah but they could see that from the writing the expression the way this man describes anything is different from the Isaiah that we know. And that scroll was rejected. It, was, it never became chapter 13 of the book of Isaiah. Same applies with the book of Enoch. They were supposed to analyze scroll by scroll. If you get to a place where there is confusion, that's the part that you were supposed to reject. Not the entire book of a man that is confirmed by this book that he walked with God. Are we together so far? <laughs> He's a man of faith. What did he do? <laughs> so this man, I'm telling you, <laughs> when you see the way he introduced himself at the beginning of his book, that I'm just one of those men that the Lord opened his eyes and I was made to see and to enter into the realms of God and to hear and to understand. From the book of Enoch, I just wanted to clear this mist around the man and to convince you that he was a man of God probably with a better record than some of the men of God that we have in the Bible. Some of the men that we have in the Bible, they might have walked with God, but we're not sure that at the point of their death, were they still in good books with God. But with Enoch, there is a record that he disappeared. His last <laughs> point of departure, he was in good books with God and he was taken such kind of a man why do you reject his work so i'm not saying if you come across his book take every verse take every chapter but i'm saying there are certain things that should have been removed from his book and certain things were supposed to have been accepted to be part of the bible that we have and the reason why they rejected his book if you read his book then you will understand because he gives a proper definition of the children of Lucifer. He describes what we now see during our time in detail. And some of the people that were canonizing the Bible were not comfortable with that kind of a description. It's too detailed. His prophetic 
ministry was able to really describe and to expose the activities of the devil. To a point that if you will get to chapter 6 of the book of Genesis, and we go to chapter 9 of the book of Genesis, and you will see the way he described the events there. Like from the book of Genesis, you only hear of the sons of God that came and they had a relationship with the daughters of men and giants were born, the Nephilims, right? But if you go to the book of Enoch, he will explain to you how it happened. Even on the day that the angels came down, and he gives you the number of the angels and their names. (laughs) 